Welcome to the National Association of Realtors Center for Realtor Development Podcast with your host, Monica Neubauer. To get more information about the courses and credentials discussed here, just visit our site at www.onlinelearning.realtor and use the coupon code PODCAST, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, to obtain 15% off the price of any online class. And now, on to the show. Hi, welcome to the Center for Realtor Development Podcast. I'm Monica Neubauer, your host, and I am so excited today because I am introducing a three-part series on technology that we're doing for the summer. There's going to be a a two-part focus on social media because social media is not just something we sort of participate in these days. We're all in and our clients are all in. And so we're going to talk about social media this month with Marky Lemons Ryle and next month with Moore Zucker. And we are going to dig into some things that will help you understand the vast ways you can use social media to help yourself in your business and to help your clients. We're going to talk about free ways to use it and paid ways to use it. So I'm really excited to help you sort through some of the things that you can do with social media and ways that you can apply that in your business. And then the third month in August, we're going to be discussing having a virtual office and some of the ways that that can look. What does that look like? What is a virtual office and how can that be helpful for you and for your clients? So I'm so excited with this three-part series and glad you're with us today. Today's guest is social media expert and speaker, Marky Lemons-Ryle. She's a licensed managing broker, realtor, avid volunteer, and major donor. She's dedicated to all things real estate. And with over 25 years of marketing experience, Marky has taught realtors how to earn up to a 2,682% return on their marketing dollars. And Marky loves free too. I've heard her teach and she'll give you lots of great free ideas. She is an excellent speaker and she does Facebook Live things all the time. So Marky is out there doing it and she is teaching realtors all over the country how to improve their social media presence and make social media work better for them. She's spoken at the national level, at the national conference. She's spoken at Inman, and we are thrilled to have her today with us as a guest on our show. Let's get started with the interview. Hi, I'm Monica Neubauer, and I want to welcome to the show today, Marky Lemons-Ryle. Welcome, Marky. Thank you for having me, Monica. I'm elated to be here today. I know you're one of those people that's always in a good mood, and I feel it genuinely. So (laughs) I'm so excited to have your good energy with me today, too. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So I know you have tons to tell us. So I'm going to jump right in here and let's get started with kind of an overview talking about social media. What are the mediums that agents are really having success in their business on social media? Well, I would say Facebook first and foremost, because if we take a look at the numbers, probably two thirds of all Internet users have Facebook, regardless of age. Second, I would take a look at Instagram because we're a very visual society and the brain digests uh, visual elements 60,000 times faster than written word. And because Instagram is all about photos and videos, I would rank it number Two. Mm-hmm. Now, for me, I often talk about LinkedIn. Now, I don't necessarily think that residential practitioners, but let me clarify that, have great success. I definitely believe that it should be a tool for those in commercial real estate, unless you're looking for reload business. And as a residential practitioner, what I would say is LinkedIn would be ideal for connecting with the Director of Human Resources and the National Association of Realtors has a program called the Employee Assisted Housing Program. Well, I believe then that you would connect with the Director of Human Resources in order to be able to get into that company. So you have to build your reputation on LinkedIn. For contingent upon who your client base is and what your long-term strategic goals, those would be the top three platforms that I would look at unless you're very niched. And then maybe we might look at a Snapchat and a Pinterest after Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Ooh, and you didn't even say Twitter. Oh, you know what? I didn't only because and let me say this. I should have said Twitter. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. no, I'm always interacting with realtor members. And what I realized, I use Bitly, which is a URL shortener and customizer and measure. Right. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I'm actually getting a lot of traffic from 
Twitter. And so I don't interact a lot on Twitter only because of the character count. And I tend to be a little bit more wordy, period, uh, than even the 200 and char- 280 <laughs> character count. I, I can't imagine. Um, yeah, 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 right. yeah. I know. Wait, wait, wait. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I have a Twitter account. But often what I'm using Twitter for is to post up to the four photos that are allowed and to shorten my video content to give video snippets. So I should have said it only because I am noticing that I am getting traffic from Twitter. Well, then we'll get into that a little bit later as kind of an auxiliary because I use it occasionally, too. There's a few good things. I wouldn't say I get business from it. But, yeah, we'll put it on like what you just said there. So, all right, well. Okay, so those are all the main ones that people are using. There are some other remote ones, but not they're not really the ones we want to focus on. So I know that a lot of agents, when I teach, you know, technology classes and what I hear from the agents and even for myself, I feel overwhelmed sometimes by the prospect of trying to keep up all these platforms. And I kind of want to be authentic because I know we need to be authentic. And yet I want it to be business focused and you know, you and I have even talked about that for myself, you know, feeling like how can I be a good person and a good business person and feel like I'm consistently myself on all these platforms? It's just like, Wah! what What are you telling agents when you talk to them about that overwhelming feeling? Um, well, the first thing is I want them to go back to their business plan. Who does the business plan say you need to be in front of? And oftentimes, yes, we feel compelled to set up all of these accounts, but they have have no purpose in our business. And so what I like for uh, licensees to do is to go back, look at their business plan, decide who they need to be in front of, and then look at the demographics and profiles of the members of those different channels and go where the clients are. Now, for me, it's still going to come back to Facebook. And there is a myth around Facebook. People are quick to tell you what, you know, seniors don't do and what millennials or younger millennials don't do. I let people know all the time, older baby boomers and younger millennials are on Facebook. The distinction is they tend not to comment, share, or like. And I'll give you an example. My aunt is 86 years old. And if she hears this, I'm in trouble. Let me let you know that right now. (laughs) But she's 86 years old. She has a Facebook account. Now, she set the Facebook account up because she realized things were going on on Facebook that she wasn't privy to. And she had to hear it through a trustee at her church. Now, my aunt does not text. All right. She does not text. She has a flip phone. However, she has a Facebook account. And on Thanksgiving, Christmas and Easter, we have to discuss what I have posted on Facebook since the last time I saw her per either what she saw herself or what another trustee at the church told her. OK, so that's my that's my older aunt. Uh-huh. Then my son, he will be 22. Oh, next week. And what's funny about him is he doesn't like share or comment either on Facebook. What he does is he takes a screenshot of what I say and he sends it to me as a form of some type of DM text messaging, IM message and get me his commentary in the DM. <laughs> and so they're they're there. Right. right. They're listening. They see everything, how they interact with it is different. And so the very first thing is go where your clients are. And that doesn't mean that you have to use every single channel, because basically what you want to do is give people what it is that they desire where they are. But you're never going to force a client to use your tool of choice. That's why you need to go back, look at the business plan, understand who who's moving out of the community, who's moving in to the community, and then you focus your efforts on that platform. Once you have a clear understanding and a strategy for that platform, then you go and you add the second likely place that they would hang out. Okay, hold on. I want to to pause you right there because I really want to emphasize something that you said and, and distill it real quickly down is we as real estate agents, we have to define our customer. Who is our customer or who is our client? I mean, this is basic business 101. And you said that, and I just wanted to say it in another way. Um, you know, who do you want to, who do you, who is your client? 
who, you know, kind of where is your business already coming from? And you already have past clients, you know, if you've been in the business for a while. So that should be a good base of business. Um, I had one agent in one of my classes talk about they wanted to meet first time home buyers and a lot of those are younger. And so they chose purposely to engage on Snapchat in their community because that was their target. And so when, when you decide who is your audience, I agree with you completely. I think they're all on Facebook and they engage. I thought that was brilliant. But it yeah. also then goes on to say, are they somewhere else where you want to be? Which gets back to what you said about LinkedIn and we can get in a little bit more. You know, there are some niches, but I agree. And I just wanted to get back to that audience. Who is your customer or who do you want to be your customer? Exactly. And, you know, the same philosophy applies offline, applies online. And now, you know, I'll take a look at this. I wanted to go into a community on the south side of Chicago that is probably the highest price point. Um, non, it's the only nondescript community on the entire south side of Chicago. And in order to get into that community, you know, I had to physically be there. I had to join the Chamber of Commerce. But then I started engaging with that chamber online. And as a result of being a member of the chamber, now I'm in the newspaper. But what am I going to do? I'm going to share the newspaper clip and take a photo of it with my phone and post it online if the same picture isn't online. And so the same uh, application we use offline, we use online. And you want to be where those clients are and you want to engage with the tools that they already have because we're not going to force them to utilize something totally uh, new or different. So that would be my book take. But then also when we think about millennials, mom, I'm use my son again. Um, he was went to he actually he blocked me on Instagram. Oh, and right. But he went to <laughs> but I was OK with being blocked, Monica, because he only has three posts in like three years. So it's nothing exciting going on <laughs> over on his Instagram account. Um, but when I wanted to uh stalk him in Miami last year, what I decided to do, I knew where he was staying. I went to Instagram and I did location based search and I was able to find two photos with my son in them from other people's account who had posted and tagged the location. And so when we start thinking about any of these tools and we think about community SEO search engine optimization and coming up in the communities that you serve, you want to also tag the location because a lot of times you can search by each of these tools based on the location. Uh, and so, you know, that's a lot to keep up with. I'm checking in on Yelp. I'm checking in on Swarm. I'm checking in on Facebook. I'm tagging photos uh, on Instagram so that people know who I am. And so today I was in High Park, went to lunch, and a young lady stopped me. And she was like, you're the Facebook lady. And people stop me all the time because I'm consistently doing things in my community offline, but I'm making sure that it's posted online based on the client. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, and I've seen an agent who lives in my neighborhood do a really excellent job of kind of low key presence. She, she's doing the garage sale organization offline as farming the neighborhood. But of course that puts her online and in the group because she's networking in the group to communicate, but then she's meeting everybody face to face because she's stopping by and she's definitely using the online and offline together. And so I'm kind of watching her, you know, from afar, observing her techniques and things. And I've been very um, excited just to see her and she gets some listings in the neighborhood. So it seems to be working for her. And it's exactly mm -hmm. what you said. The combination of real, because house buying is a real live activity. It's not a, I mean, there's virtual parts to it, but the house we live in is a real experience, not a virtual experience. Then now that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and you want people, people, you know, do business with what? Is it people who they like, trust? And it was one other one from the other day. I can't remember. Like and trust. We know that those are two. Yeah. Um, and you're going to have a higher conversion rate from the people who you meet versus the people you don't meet. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. 
Just say that, also, say that again. Say that one more time. <laughs> you're going to have a higher conversion rate from the people who you meet versus the people you don't meet. Now, the stat that I recall was we have a one in 50 chance of converting someone we've never met versus a one in six chance for a person we have. Now, that might have changed over time. But statistically speaking, you want to be a part of the community. Yes. You want to be out shaking hands. And I often look at the agents who sit in the office all day. Most of those agents are going to be the least productive agents. Productive agents are out. They're on listing appointments, showing appointments. And because they're in the community, they want to leverage social media and technology to take photos of the things that are going on in the community and then tag those photos in the community. So it all comes back to real estate being local. But now we have a cloud that basically hangs Overhead, where that same content from the streets, we get to put it in the cloud. Okay, so let's talk briefly about, and this is going to apply to all social media platforms. You know, you're talking about being in the community, and you're talking about tagging the groups or tagging the locations. So connect that with hashtags, because that's I use hashtags a lot in my Instagram. You know, hashtag Franklin Tennessee, where I live, and. You know, that gets me in the conversations. Talk a little bit more about how specifically how people do that. Just let's get into the technical just a little bit with that. So a hashtag is a pound sign that prepends a word or group of words. If it is a group of words, there cannot be any spaces uh, between the words. I look at hashtag. It basically filters a conversation or streamlines a conversation. And so when you're using the hashtag for your city, that means that I want to know about that city. I don't want to know about Nashville, Tennessee. I don't want to know about Memphis, Tennessee. I want to know Franklin, right? Right. Franklin, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So when I filtered out all of the other areas and I want to go specific to conversations on that channel, That hopefully, and I hope people don't misuse their hashtags, that hopefully that video, that content, that photo is about Franklin, either a venue, uh, a sports event, an upcoming event that's going to be in that city. So a lot of times people do search by hashtag. Like the other day I was searching for a Chicago barber because I wanted a new barber in the Chicago land area. I didn't want Atlanta. I didn't want DC. I didn't want a color specialist. I wanted a barber. So we want to be honest and ethical in the hashtags that we're using, but people search by hashtags probably more likely on an Instagram and a Twitter than the other platforms, even though you can search by hashtags on any of the platforms. Mm -hmm. And as realtors, we want to also come up with a branded hashtag. And that's a hashtag that's custom just to us. Now, I I, I am forewarning people to be a little uh, cautious with the hashtags. And here's the reason. If I was to put, uh, let's say, realtors as a hashtag, well, When people go to search for that hashtag, they're going to also see my competition because any realtor that use the hashtag realtor on the post, their content is going to come up as well in reverse chronological order. So it's a way of me also exposing or giving light to my potential competition. So we have to be a little careful when using them. I probably wouldn't. Well, you want to use hashtags that you know people are searching for so that your content can come up where you can service them. Right. But to just and to be conscious enough. of that. Yeah, I hear just, what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Because we have a lot of realtors who um in their post they're using the hashtag for their company. And I hate to say this, but some companies and I'm not going to call anyone out because it would be regardless. Some companies when you look at the um trademark right uh use of the name really can't use a hashtag if they have any characters because the character will break the hashtag. Okay. No, wait, uh, so wait, they wait, have, wait, what did, I didn't understand what that, what you just said about the characters breaking the hashtag. What does that mean? Right. So I'll give you, I learned this when I was teaching a class for Remax. When we put that forward slash in and they put the hashtag, the M A X after it is not going to be there. It's just going to be hashtag R E. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so they a lot of times you perfectly. can't, Right. So when we're adhering to the trademarks of the companies that we work for, you might if it has a character or symbols in it, it might not translate well into a hashtag. So by using the hashtag that isn't alignment with the trademark use, you might be in violation. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. I just realized it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, but that's what we're learning. Thing, new information. That's one of the hot things about this is that, you know, you and I go and teach classes and we learn things from our students as well because everything is changing so fast. Oh, yeah. You blink your, well, you wake up tomorrow, right? You're going to have an update to an app. One of your apps is going to have an update. That means it does something new tomorrow it doesn't do today. Right. And that's every single day. You know, sometimes I'll go to my uh, app up and I have 30 updates. And I'm like, oh, 30 new things, huh? And generally, it's not just one update, right, on that one app. It could be multiple updates. So there's something new to learn every single day. And it is impossible for one person to stay abreast of all of those changes. And our students teach us new information every single day. Yep, we're all learning together. This is a, a growth process together. Um, there are a few people who do this so niche and exclusively okay, but the rest of us, well, we're a step behind, but we're still making progress <laughs> every day. But I, you know, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm where I am and you are where you are. You're farther along than me. That's why you're here. And, uh, other people are where they are. So, and hopefully everybody can find, you know, one or two good things from our conversation to take. To improve their business. That's our goal. And they will. Yeah, I they think will. they will. I've already gotten some stuff from what you said. So <laughs> good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, okay. Now the let's let's dig into Facebook because it's mm-hmm. such there's such a treasure trove there. Like you said, it really is the most popular one and most of our clients are there. Um, why don't you help give our listeners some specific ways that they can use Facebook to improve their business? I mean, you've talked about connecting in the community and tagging and being at events. Uh, what else comes to mind? You know what? To me, and not just Facebook, but but Facebook. Let's. Just, this is probably the biggest takeaway from Facebook. Facebook is the biggest, largest, uh, probably most accurate listening device in the world because people tell you all of their business in real time. And I joke with my students, but it's the 100% truth. I understand everyone's relationship status. I know who's engaged. I know who's pregnant. I know who's probably getting ready to get a divorce based on Not often, not always what they tell Facebook, but also what they don't tell Facebook. So if you think about it, Christmas, New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day, what was one of the biggest changes that would have occurred to a person's life on those three holidays? And we learned about it in real time on Facebook. Anything comes to mind? Well, a few things. I mean, a marriage or a pregnancy, those could come up because they're with family, so now they're announcing it publicly. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the two that come to my mind. So this is what I tell people. She is going to post, he put a ring on it, and he is going to put, she said, yes to the ring. Yes. Christmas, New Year's Eve, and Valentine's Day. And then guess what is going to happen in about nine months? <laughs> we will get the, come on now. I know. We're going to I get, know. The, we're going to get, we are expecting whether they get married or not. And so we're learning this information in real time. Uh, a newly married couple, a family that's expanding could all indicate a highly motivated buyer or seller because something is changing that will make them highly motivated. And recently, even though it sounds morbid, we do have realtors who uh, book of business came from combing the obituary sections. You don't have to comb the obituary sections anymore because the first thing we're going to see are praying hands, right? They're Mm -hmm. going to say, pray for me. We know who's had a heart attack, a stroke, had a major surgery, who passed away in real Time. I promise you, within 12 to 24 hours of anyone passing, leaving this earth, there is going to be a Facebook post unless people are being courteous and they're making sure that the family knows first. And oftentimes they could care less about that. They're just posting it as soon as they know. So as realtors, we get to sit and listen. We get to go and buy 
once again, bridging that online offline relationship. We have stores here uh, in the Chicagoland area. I don't know if they're all over, but I know Marshall's, TJ Maxx and Ross are. But then we have a grocery store called uh, Trader Joe's. I can go and buy cards, 99 cent to two dollars and 99 cent sympathy cards for humans, for pets. Congratulations on your pregnancy. Congratulations on your upcoming marriage and take it now and bridge that relationship. And I don't see enough realtors doing that. They just told you what's wrong and what's important to them. And they mentioned it because it's important to them. Well, that is excellent. And it's a great reminder, too, to think they're. They're communicating online and we may or may not connect with them face to face, but they're probably not getting a lot of cards because most people will just put their comments in Facebook and feel like they've offered an appropriate condolence or a, <laughs> an appropriate congratulations or something. Right. Um, and so exactly. the, the card, when, when we send a card and now this is one of the areas where you know, I personally have wrestled with this in my business. I think, well, gosh, am I, am I sending them a card just because I want to get their business? And so that was a huge heart issue for me early in my business. And what I finally came to decide was, you know what? I'm probably sending cards as, you know, it's as part of my time blocking in my business to send cards and thank yous. I'm doing it intentionally. But you know what? Some days I send cards to people who aren't going to give me business. And you know what? If my business helps me be a more positive force in the world, that's what I want to put out there is being encouraging and friendly to people. And if the business comes to me, which I believe it will, I'm not going to worry about that person giving me business. I'm going to put, you know, encouragement and condolence and sympathy and congratulations out there And let people just feel good and trust that the rest comes with it. And that's such an easy way for some of the realtors who are um, nervous about being really calling and the real serious kind of proactive lead generation. Just love on your friends. And, you know, that's we all need that. Let me say this. When I send those cards out of that nature, I do not include my business card. Yeah. So I just sign the card. I make sure they have a clear, you know, return address, but I do not include a business card in those type of cards. Um, and I don't anticipate business to come from it, but I'm clear I'm doing something that no one else does. A friend of mine, uh, my father was injured a couple of years ago. Young lady lives a couple of blocks from me, sent me a card. I know exactly who she is because, and guess what? I have it now in my notes. To send her, not every year, but to send her an occasional birthday card because she went out her way. She found my address and she sent me, a, you know, I hope your father's doing better card. And I said, oh, that was that was so thoughtful of her. Um, and so when I'm sending cards of that nature, I do not include my business card in those cards. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's a question that people often have about that. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And and the law of attraction. So I often it's on my calendar. Right. And I call it the make people feel good day. OK. And I take joy in knowing that they're going to be, you know, surprised or pleasantly surprised or getting something that no one else is going to send them. And I know that it will come back to me. So in thinking about the law of attraction and putting good vibes out there, you're going to get that back. And it might not be business. It could be, you know, something it could be something even more valuable than business. It could be uh, somebody shares with you a tip that it, that increases your business tenfold. That, yeah. That's kind of how I think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just it's just good ways of doing life. And it's good ways yeah. for us to connect real life with people and get off of Facebook. So, yeah. Yeah. So All they're right. telling us, right, about yep. so their needs and their us. wants. Yep. And so now we create content that addresses their needs and their concerns. That's really what I think we need to do. And oftentimes I tell uh, realtors and they don't like to hear this. We share content consistently with consumers that they don't engage or interact with. Our listings have three disqualifiers in it that mean nothing to our sphere of influence. And those three disqualifiers are it isn't the community or address location. It isn't the price point or it isn't the bedroom bathroom count that our sphere of influence desires. So if you looked at real estate posts of most real estate professionals, it's just a listing that that post received the least amount of engagement uh, over anything else that they've posted. 
So we have to start thinking about how do we educate the consumer? How do we become first in mind? But we don't continue to give them the content that they don't like to engage with. And so that kind of brings us to why we should use videos, why we should use a ton of photos, because this is the content that the consumers desire and you cannot keep force feeding them or they will not interact with you. And I believe the last stat that I saw from the National Association of Realtors uh, profile of buyers and sellers, 95 percent of people buying and selling real estate will utilize the Internet, but up to 75 percent will do business with the first real estate professional they come in contact with. So you want to be online. You want to be utilizing. You want to utilize the tools that they uh, utilize, but you want to give them the content they desire because the goal is to be the first person they they connect with because you're likely going to get the business. Right. That is, if they see you and you look professional and you see, you know, you come across well and professional, most of them won't get another opinion. Yep. It's true. Well, well, I'm glad you said that because let me say this. I also tell people, do not put yourself in a position to not get hired because you have offended those who would do business with you. So growing up, there was my my great grandmother, my grandmother said, Marky, there are two things that women shouldn't talk about publicly, religion and politics. And every single day I see real estate professionals basically demean people who would buy and sell from them in their community, but they put down that person's political affiliation or their religious beliefs. People aren't going to do business with you if they don't like you. And if you put down their religious and their political beliefs, they're not going to like you. Yeah. And people, many more people are watching you than you think. And oh, yes. Yeah. This is kind of how <laughs> I observe this, you know, because <clears throat> In, in Facebook, you know, we've been watching this new algorithm and we're not seeing as many uh, of our friends on there anymore. And, and it's been frustrating. Well, I had, this is kind of shows two of your points. Um, one is I put a picture of myself and my daughter up this last weekend. She's, she was in a performance and I got, you know, like 150 likes or comments, likes, loves, comments, you know, whatever on it. I haven't gotten 150 in quite some time. And, you know, so it was exactly what you said. One, it was a picture. It was my family. So it was, you know, my friends and people who are acquainted with me, they like seeing us doing things. They like, this is something my daughter even showed me with um selfies and things. Why do people do so many selfies? Mom, they get more likes. So People like the pictures. They like seeing us engaging in different things. And then to the point that you were just saying where I wanted to say more people are watching you than you think, you know, I've gone like a couple of months. I guess I just posted boring stuff and I didn't get any likes or hardly any comments. And then boom, I post this cute picture with my daughter and bam, all of a sudden I, I can see that people are actually seeing my stuff. They just didn't want to comment before. So every now and then you get that reminder that, oh, yeah, there's way more people who are seeing your stuff than you think. You're right about that. And yeah. here's the thing. And they take screenshots and share it even more. So. Yes. <laughs> nothing. Nothing is totally private on the Internet. Yes, that's for nothing. sure. Nothing. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, uh- Do you talk with your client? I mean, I'm sure you mentioned this, but one of the things that I think is so cool about Facebook that helps us interact with people we want to interact with, whether they're our clients or other real estate agents, is the the lists. Oh, yeah. So then you get to segment people kind of like your uh, email distribution list or your customer relationship management systems. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, yeah, Facebook basically has a customer relationship management system built into it, and it's connected to Messenger for those who utilize it. And to be quite honest with you, I communicate through Messenger every single day. But here has been the true value. In the city of Chicago, we have aldermen, okay, and aldermen might be considered councilmen in other cities. So I remember it was about two years ago. No, it was more than two years ago. Um, I received an email from one of my aldermen. He told me he had all new staff. All I was doing was dreading the fact that I needed something from him. I needed to go and get these new girls in his office in order. That meant that I needed to take donuts and coffee and befriend them so that they would give me access to the alderman who I've known for 20 plus years. Right. Right. And I'm like, who feels like going through this nonsense? So guess what I did? 
do. I go to his Facebook account. I realize that he had been active that day. And most of our communication is initiated inside of Messenger. And then when we need to start scheduling a calendar event, I then take him to email. Well, I'm also a SLC, a state legislative contact, have a new house rep that uh, I'm his contact. Well, come to find out he's a long term friend of mine. We are not friends on Facebook because I'm at friend capacity, but I need to make some, some space for him. Yes. <laughs> well, when we were at our capital conference meeting in Springfield a couple of weeks ago, I invited him to our dinner via messenger. He came to the dinner. Uh, we just had a big event last week. I invited him via messenger. He told me, Marky, I'm in Springfield for meetings. I won't be able to make the meeting. And so n- think about, you know, real estate is a political business at the end of the day. And sometimes you need to get approvals done through your councilman, your alderman, your senator, whoever you need to go to. And they're all utilizing social media. So I have them all grouped together and I communicate. My primary means of communicating with them is via Facebook messenger. Wow. That's a great reminder. And let me ask you this. Okay. I'm going to be real honest here. I, I know there's no privacy anymore and I'm not, I don't consider myself a private person. You know, I put all my Facebook posts, almost all of them are public just because, you know, everybody's going to see it anyway. I don't care. I keep that in mind with everything. But so my imaginary little privacy boundary, um, <laughs> and that's all it is. I know is around messenger. Because like you said earlier, Facebook is like almost primarily a listening software. We know that they're hearing us. We see the ads and everything. Okay. So I have, I haven't installed Messenger. So maybe I should be embarrassed. I still check it on my computer, but you know, I don't have it on my phone. <laughs> That's been my little illusion of privacy there. So talk me into or tell me why I should. I mean, I'm hearing what you're saying, but. Why don't you give me that little boost about Messenger and see, tell me the benefits that should overcome me giving them access to everything I have in my phone and my life. Well, one, they already have access. I know you've already said that. They already have (laughs) access. So it's, it's another way into all of that content. But then we've given them access to things like Google and to our contact list anyway through other apps like LinkedIn or through Twitter because we want to know uh, if our other friends are on these platforms, right? And so we have basically connected everything together. And if they can't get it one way, they can get it another way. Uh, and so, yeah, I know, I know we think that, that Messenger is just the, you know, the king of all take your data. No, they've been taking the data. <laughs> and if you got Gmail for your email account, they got data. And if you use LinkedIn, you likely connected it to something. And here's the thing. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to take Facebook. I'm canceling my Facebook subscription. And someone, it was a meme. It was the funniest meme ever. Well, not the funniest, but one of the funniest. And it says, how will I get into any of my accounts? Because the way that I log in is through Facebook. Oh, so, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, exactly. Right. So it's yeah. like, uh oh, I got to go back and remember, you know, a hundred new passwords because I log in via I log in with my Facebook credentials um, and or my Google credentials. Right. right? Yeah. So a lot of places you don't even know what your passwords are because you log in via really something else. Uh, but Messenger. And let me say this. I do get spam. Not as much as I was receiving via Messenger. They have really cut down probably in the last 60 days on the amount of spam. But it is really an extension of my customer relationship management system and bots. Uh, they call them chat bots. One of the ways that uh, Facebook appears to stalk us is through a retargeting pixel. So basically, I place an ad. They give me a snippet of code. I copy and paste it on my website. If you visit my website, because you clicked on it, at the moment you come back to Facebook, my ad appears. So it's basically copying and pasting code. Well, the same thing now can occur via Messenger. So when I use a chat bot, it is an automated messaging system that basically brings in predictive analytics. So let me say this. I might say, um, hmm, uh, what's the weather today, right? And I might give you some options, hot, cold, rainy. You select one. You say rainy. I then might say, oh, do you have an umbrella? And you say yes or no. And if you say yes, I might say what brand or how much did you pay for it? So it's basically a 
it leads you down um, what those initial questions are that we would ask in a buyer or a seller consultation that leads me to sending you information as tailored as possible. And you messenger right now that chat bot in regards to conversion rate, uh, people reading it is outperforming pretty much in. Anything else outperforming text messages, outperforming email messages, outperforming mail. And so chatbots are real. Uh, people in real estate, when I was at a uh, Inman in New York, they were like, oh, we don't like it. We might not like it, but consumers do. Mm. And there's been numerous tools that we didn't like. However, they're very successful because they're consumer driven. So we want to do what consumers want, not what other real estate professionals think is appropriate. And I don't mean do anything illegal or unethical. However, we want to be like the blue ocean strategy. We have to think outside of the box and do something, think outside of the box and do something that is new. And chatbots are here to stay and they perform quite well in Messenger. I have it on my list of things to learn more about because we're interacting with them every single day. When we think that maybe we have customer service, we don't have customer service. We have a chatbot that is filtering that conversation to lead us in the right direction. And in case people aren't familiar with exactly with the chatbot, that's the little box that comes up when you're on websites and you want to get a, more information. And you're talking about that's expanding into Messenger. I mean, we're seeing that more and more all the time. Oh, it, oh it's big in Messenger. It's yeah. huge. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's huge in Messenger. Well, I haven't seen and it. Well, obviously, because I don't have Messenger. <laughs> <laughs> That would be the reason. Oh, my gosh. I'm missing chatbots on Messenger. Oh, my gosh. Let me run and go get it, okay? (laughs) That one did not persuade me, Marky. I know. I know. I know. I know. Well, imagine this. When people now go to your website, you can collect their information, put it in your to your customer relationship management system, but you can also deliver them whatever great content about the community you want them to have. Yep. And so... If you didn't understand really what Marky just talked about, that's okay. Just mark it up as something you heard that's happening and coming. And next time you learn more about it, you'll have more of a slot for it. But this is something that's it's out there and it's very relevant and it is happening. And I wanted to highlight one other thing you said in that conversation is that we as real estate agents, we often think about how things we like and don't like. And we have to put ourselves in the consumer's shoes and and you said that, and I wanted to emphasize it because, you know, when you and I get in classes with um, agents and they're like, oh, I don't want to do that or I don't like that or why do we need to do that? And then I start talking to them and I say, OK, put on your consumer hat and we start talking about how they like to shop and how they like to do things. Then the light bulb starts to go off for them and they start to say, wow, yeah, I like to do things that way. And then they begin to see the importance of their business and their presence on the Internet in a stronger way because even though there's is a more person to person business before they even meet that consumer, they're looking at them online and want to make sure that they're techy enough, connected enough, you know, that in that way. Yeah. That it's all about the consumer, what they want and they will not interact if you're not getting, giving them what they want. <laughs> they just not. Well, and let's um, briefly, I want to mention one of my favorite things that I like to talk about here is if they're looking for you on these, all these platforms that we've been talking about, And they're hoping to find you there. And I'm not going to encourage everybody to get on every platform because that may not be your thing and that's just a stressor. But, you know, most if not all of us are on Facebook and probably one or two others, you know, because of our family or whatever, or we just like it. Um, Please, 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 please go make a good profile of yourself. Talk about um, not being a secret agent for us, Marky, about making a good a good profile that's still friendly and business Uh, friendly and approachable and authentic, but still business appropriate. So what I recommend is that people start with a clean slate, open up Microsoft Word or um, your Google Drive. And you want to, one, tell people what it is that you do, but do not describe it like you would in the MLS. In the MLS, we use a lot of fluffy buzzwords that no one I mean, no one uses when they're looking to buy or sell real estate. No one searches magnificent, marvelous, fantastic. <laughs> um, think about every house you've purchased. Work. Did you include those words? Like, I want a magnificent three-bedroom 
two bedroom. <laughs> That's not how we look, right? So most real estate searches start with a local search term. So you definitely want to include where you're doing real estate. You want to adhere to license law and the realtor code of ethics. So you must include the company that you work for. Uh, I know that the code of ethics often talks about one click away. There might not be a one click away. Or if they click back, they're going to get the same thing they see where they are. And so you have to identify the company you work for. You want to talk about location. But you also want to talk to people um, in the manner that they're searching. If you are, we say, single family resident, you might say something else. It might be a bungalow or a style house. It might be a condo expert or it might be a niche. Include those words in your bios. Also, with the exception of LinkedIn, think about including emojis. Uh, people like emojis. The brain reads the emojis faster than they do words. So use the house emoji. Or if it's a hot market, use the flame emoji. Oh, cool. And you, I've seen you do right. that on your profile. So now I know I, why you're I doing definitely. that. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and then the, um, the next thing, if they have links and they let you link to a site, link to it, but maximize the character count. Most of the bios are going to range between a minimum of 120 up to 160 characters. I recommend that people write a bio up to 160 characters using the most relevant keywords, what they want to be known for at the very beginning. And then if they come across a 120 character profile, you delete from the end. You'll have it there and you copy and you paste and you tweak it maybe a couple of words contingent upon the platform. So like I don't use the emojis uh, nearly as much on LinkedIn. I do have one emoji and that is a microphone. Uh, in my name, just so people will know that I'm a speaker, but I don't use them other places in that bio. Yeah, yeah. And and with LinkedIn, I want to encourage all agents really to fill that out well because Google searches it really, really well. And remember when you're writing a longer bio that you can use on LinkedIn and even in some other places, when you're doing the longer one, even it's what you just said, though, you want to have the most important things at the top because usually it's like a click more. And you have to go down. So whatever you're writing, if it's a blog post or it's a bio or something, if it's longer, remember that it's always going to cut it to that top few lines just as mm -hmm. a descriptor thing. So always think about that. But fill out your LinkedIn profile completely because it's one of the top searches, especially if you don't have a good website. If you don't have a website, make sure your LinkedIn profile is really complete because people will still validate. You'll still be validated by having that professional site like that. Yes, I 100 percent agree. Yep. And the way I would also look at your bio, think about if you've ever gone to New York and you're standing in Times Square, right? And all of these messages are being thrown at you. Your bio is a message. Therefore, it is the introduction to you. And if it's uh, incomplete or you don't maximize it, then you're pushed down below those other agents. And remember, 75 percent, they're first person. So I need to be number one and rise to the top because I'm talking to you the way that you're searching and because I am complete. I've maximized every character humanly possible. Yeah. And that's... you'll stand out just like a billboard in yeah. Times Square. In Times Square. Space. Woo, woo, woo. It's a crowded space. But you want that one little, you know, you want your one blink. That's well, really what you want. And I want to tell agents to really, really please always have your phone number available. I mean, especially when you've got room for it. I know some of you, again, are trying to protect your privacy, but, you know, people are looking for you on Facebook. And if they can't find your phone number, they might message you or they might look at somebody else. Don't be a secret agent. Now, Monica, I have one little disclaimer, though, for that one. Oh, you're going to disagree with me on this one, huh? Okay. No, I'm not. No, oh, no, no. Okay. I believe okay. that you should have your phone number, provided that your voicemail box is not full. Oh, true uh. that. True that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're real estate agents. If we're fortunate enough to get a call, they should be able to leave a message. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Please. <laughs> All right. Okay. So with Facebook, um, gosh, you know, we're 
nearing the end of our time, and all we've talked about is Facebook. Well, um, but I know you love video. I really want to. I really want you to talk a little bit about video, and I, we've touched on some of the others as well. So I'm not too worked up about getting up to the other social medias. But talk about video a bit because I know it's so important for where we're going, and you're so good at it. Well, thank you very much. And this is. I am going to give you a tip about video, but then all of the other platforms, because. We talked a little bit about Snapchat, right? Um, I love Snapchat. I use it as my number one tool to aggravate Carrie Little's husband, Mark, and my husband. But <laughs> it is, it's, it's the best of three worlds, right? Photos, videos, messenger, because millennials definitely utilize it as a messaging system. What I would tell people, and I recommend this, create, whether your audience is on Snapchat or not, and if you're not um, catering to millennials, then your audience is probably not on Snapchat. But just because I use Snapchat doesn't mean that I always post it to Snapchat. Snapchat, Instagram stories, and Facebook stories are all vertical. Therefore, a lot of times, because I like the filters and I like the fact that Snapchat owns Bitmoji. I'm creating video and photo content on Snapchat, downloading it to my mobile device so that I can share it on the platforms where my clients are, being Facebook Stories and Instagram Stories. Uh, people utilize Instagram and view Instagram Stories more than they are viewing Facebook Stories, even though I do receive uh, messages every single time I post, actually both. So if I'm posting uh, something to Instagram stories or to Facebook stories, which roll across the top on the mobile device, I have people who are sending me messages. Okay. I have several questions about you, what, what you just said. Um, okay. Okay. One, well, one, first, just a brief story to confirm what you said about the Snapchat videos. I had an agent in a class say that when, and she's a little cheeky, so, you know, this isn't appropriate for everybody, but she's, uh, she says sometimes she has to send, um, a little something that might be perceived as a conflict or, um, or a, a reminder that, you know, they're really late on something. What she does is she creates a cute video in Snapchat and sends them the message that way. So now it becomes a little bit humorous and disarming rather than being confrontive. So. Oh, I, yeah. Do you love that? I don't think it's a serious. I think it's a great idea. If if you want, if you want to. Yes, I would 100 <laughs> percent. I wouldn't. I've never done that. But I think that that's a great way to do it because it's not a serious platform. If like it, people. It's lighthearted. Right. And if it fits your I personality, it like it's not that. for everybody. Oh, my gosh. We we sent you back a tip. So kudos to Alaska. If y'all are listening. Um, they just Yay. shared that with me. So, okay. The other thing that I was thinking about with story, and I wanted to ask you this, I appreciate what you're saying. You said, so Instagram stories are more popular than Facebook stories. Mm -hmm. Um, but what, one of the things with that, when I create something, I wonder, I don't like to see the same content on every platform. And some people, you know, they put it in Instagram and then they share it on Facebook, they share it on Twitter and they share it all the same. Um, one, I don't think the platforms like the cross sharing as much, so it doesn't get you as much good, you know, juju and attention. Um, but mm -hmm. also what, what do you share, think about cross sharing and what might be best for each platform? I know I'm kind of asking you multi-layered questions, but I'm sure you can give me a good answer here. To talk so about when stories. I'm creating, I tend to use Snapchat, I download it and I don't post the same identical content to Instagram and to Facebook because there's definitely some overlap between the two. I mean, well, hey, Facebook owns Instagram. Uh, and so I will alternate those posts so you'll get something different on each one. But if I'm promoting a class, then I'm going to share that across every last one of the platforms in the same identical manner. But the story before or after that promotional piece is going to be different. And so I'm not sharing that same piece of content across necessarily all three of the platforms or what I've started to do is stagger how I'm making my post. I'm realizing that the more popular platforms, you will see them post the same thing either multiple times um, throughout the course of the day, realizing that there's a different audience based on the time of the post. I don't do that per se, but there are a, especially when it comes to clothes, you know. I try to take Instagram on one day, Facebook on another day, 
LinkedIn on another day because I don't believe that everyone in our sphere of influence sees everything. And based on how the algorithm is of each platform, I know they're not going to see the same thing unless we are just very connected and we're engaging with that person's content on all the platforms, then they're their content will be put before us more often, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And so are there some places, you know, that you can definitely cross promote and it's going to be two different audience? Oh, most definitely. Um, a lot of people, I only see them in their post on LinkedIn. I never see those posts on Facebook. Never. Um, and so LinkedIn to me is kind of like its own paradigm where I'm not seeing the cross promote nearly as much. But if you're doing the same thing on Instagram and on Facebook, you're likely going to see it. And guess what? They're back to the same identical ad. So if you put an ad behind something, it's definitely can appear on Facebook and on Instagram at the same time. Well, and they, you might sign up for that because they're owned by the same people. Same that, company. That, yeah, yeah so most that's definitely. The way you could do that. Well, that's good advice. Maybe do it differently. And so I'm thinking now, if a real estate agent does have a listing, and, I mean, so many listings are selling so immediately that they may not even need to do this kind of marketing. But, you know, if they want to present a property on Instagram or on Facebook in an interesting manner, what are some of the suggestions you have for um, either marketing their listings or themselves in a way that's interesting and authentic to people in a public way? So it's not just, oh, here's my listing, look at it, buy it. You know, what are you seeing as some of the best ideas for authentic business uh, interaction? Well, I believe that they should definitely utilize the live platform and they should do previews to open houses and broker tours. I think they should highlight price changes or any updates to the property via video because they don't have to be long. If they have an event, a marketing event for the property, then they definitely want to do some type of live stream video. And here's the thing. Snapchat essentially is live stream and video Instagram stories and Facebook stories plus Facebook live. What I like to do is I take my videos and I put them on my YouTube channel to build out my playlist. But now every single time I load a video to YouTube, you can do it either by uh, channel or by playlist. It automatically takes that to iTunes and converts it into a podcast. So video content can allow you to create content in multiple formats without recreating the content. So whether it's going to be a live streaming video uh, on any of the, essentially on most of the platforms, I want to give them video content. Most real estate professionals do not, and not most, a, 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 a lot are scared of live streaming video. The next recommendation I have is that they use a two quick buy GoPro, which is free. Uh, I think maybe some people use an Ana, uh, is it Animoto? Uh, uh, Animoto. Animoto. What is, and what was Animoto, the other? Animoto. Uh, I use one. quick, quick, yeah, Q-U-I-K, buy. quick buy GoPro. Okay. Take your listing photos and turn them into a video. Quick adds the automation. It adds, uh, oh, well, the transition, word overlay, Royalty free music. So you have five photos, you turn them into a video. You got 30 photos, you turn them into a video. Uh, but I would definitely focus on video content only because it's the most engaging. Also, they need to add a call to action. Tell people what you want them to do. Yeah. We do not see enough call to actions. How do you want them to interact with you? And even though a lot of people have IDX feed websites, they don't have blog platforms necessarily built into their IDX feed websites, or they don't have a, a landing page either. I encourage blogs. And if you're not going to get one inside of your website, then use LinkedIn because it has great search engine optimization. And you want to have a landing lead capture squeeze form because you want to give them something of value in exchange for their contact information so you can follow up and add them to your customer relationship management system. So for me, it's a it's a system, you know, and it's multiple steps, but it leads to the ability to follow up consistently. Right. And video is the way to make things interesting and more interactable and people like it. And and I agree. with Yes, you. they do. Yeah. Don't forget the call <laughs> to action. Do you want them to come to the open house? Do you want them to call you? Do you want them to visit your website? Exactly. What do you want them to do? To do. OK, so I'm going to ask you one more question and then I'm going to give you the final word. 
Um, okay. But before we go to the final word, can what's your suggestion about should people time block their social media time? You know, I mean, I find I flip over and check Facebook sometimes during the day. I check Instagram more when I'm out because it's on my phone. But when I want to be intentional with it, how are you encouraging agents? What are some of the ideas you have for intentionally? Is it just time blocking a half an hour every day or how do we plug that in? Sometimes I feel like oh, I'm on my phone too much or I don't want to do it then or I want to do it later and then I forget. So what do you suggest for that? I do recommend that they time block and they time block. I put an hour per day, Monday through Friday. Um, when you time block, I use Google uh, Calendar. I put it, you know, I go in and I do the Monday through Friday for 52 weeks at the beginning of the year. And what was recommended to me through the University of Chicago is that a lot of people are not going to take that one hour. And so if you know you're not going to take one full hour, break it down and do a 30 minute and two 15 minute slots. And then at the beginning of the week, when we're reviewing our calendar for the upcoming week and you know that you have a morning meeting on Tuesday, then move that time slot back. But what you want to do is have it on the calendar, whether it's that time every single day so that you know that it will get done and you'll work everything else around it. But I definitely believe it should be on the calendar. It should be on the calendar now. It should be on the calendar for, you know, at least five five times per week, minimum of 30 minutes per day. And then every Sunday you come back and you're like, oh, can't do that. I'm at the dentist. So move that time block either up or back to make sure that you still take the social uh, media efforts. Right. The social media intentional marketing, spending time with your client lists on Facebook or engaging with commentary, not just with likes, engage with commentary and then even adding your note writing time attached to that. It's all lead generation. You know, it's, it's, I would say it's lead generation with a giving friendly mentality. Ah, I like that. It's not too catchy, but you get the idea. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> let's be friends. Let's be friendly and get more business because uh, we all need a little more friendship in our lives, I think, anyway. So that's a good thing. All right. Well, gosh, we've talked about so much. And yet, as you know, there's still so much to talk about. But um, I want to leave you with uh, the final word. Any final comments or things that you really want to leave uh, our realtor listeners with in um, in using social media in their business, in their lives? Even though this is a podcast, I tend to start my class with one sentence. I am the shortest, darkest, roundest person in the room with the least amount of hair. Yet I do video every single day because people do not care about how I look. They care if I can solve their buying and selling problems. If I could encourage you to do anything, it would be to create video content. If you're not going to go live, then use tools like Quick by GoPro and take your photos and turn them into videos because you have to give people what they want where they are. Indeed, what they want where they are. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Marky, for your time today. Thank you for having me. Wow, was that a great interview with Marky or what? I know you must have gotten some great tips there. I know I did. So practice what you've gotten from the interview today. And here's the thing. There's a lot in there that she talked about, and there's always a lot to learn. And one of my personal philosophies is to keep making progress. Don't be overwhelmed by all the things that could be done. Start getting active on what you can do. Apply what works for you in your business today. And don't worry about the rest. You'll get more later. You'll have more opportunities later. But start today just to start making progress, not to be overwhelmed. All right. Remember, all these things are part of your toolkit. You don't need all the tools all the time. But when you need them, you've got them in your toolkit. All right. So I want you to remember that as you apply this. Now, next month, look for our interview with Moore Zucker from Denver, Colorado. She's a practitioner there. And we're going to talk about how she's using social media in her business to get business, to market her listings, and to provide ongoing value for her clients. All right. Now, if you have realized today that you would love to get some more tech and social media classes, well, you know, Your state associations are offering those often with your statewide events. But you know what? There are some great designation courses from the Center of Realtor Development and with NAR that you can take to get more technologically savvy and educated. Let me give you a few examples. One is the EPRO certification with Reback. 
they've been working on revamping it as they need to. You know, they they updated every couple of years now because things are changing so fast. And they've added a new second day on data protection. So look for that in your area. Also with Reback, there's the real estate marketing reboot. Innovate, relate, differentiate. So that course has been completely redone and updated as well and talks a lot about social media marketing and other ways for you to market your business in a modern world. And thirdly, the um, Residential Real Estate Council for your CRS designation, they have a two-day class called Technologies for Improving Your Business. So there's some great classroom uh, opportunities for you to improve your technology, but you can also go to onlinelearning.realtor and sign up to take some of these classes online, other webinars, the RRC has webinars. So there's great places for you to take this to the next level with the NAR education opportunities. All right. Lastly, I want to ask those of you who are faithful listeners, and I know there's a few out there and I'm so grateful for you coming back and, and hanging out with us. But if you could go to iTunes or your favorite podcast app and give us a good written review, that would just be so huge because that would help us get the word out to others. It would help us look good to others and they might have a listen. And so also, if you could share this podcast with one person to help get the word out that it's out there and people can uh, learn and improve their business through it, who do you want to help improve their business? Who can you share with and spread an abundant philosophy with today and help them get good free education? All right. I wish you all a great month. Go out there. Have a great month selling and serving. I'll see you later. Thanks for listening to the Center for Realtor Development podcast. If you like what you just heard, we hope you give us a positive rating on iTunes and pass along our podcast web address, crdpodcast.com, to your friends and colleagues. If you have any questions or suggestions for future show topics or ideas about how we can improve, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Just email us at crd at realtors.org. This show is sponsored by the Center for Realtor Development, an online learning platform owned and operated by the National Association of Realtors.